Hi everyone, this is Eagle News. I am EJ Gonzalez here in Washington. It's Saturday, September 3, 2022, here in the nation's capital. The week's recap begins now. It's Labor Day weekend. Friends and families gather for barbecues, parades, and picnics. Unfortunately, impaired driving accidents increase during holiday weekends like this one. Here's Myla Simbulan to tell us how transportation authorities, like those in Pennsylvania, urge motorists to take extra care. Take a look. As Labor Day is celebrated here in the U.S. this weekend, travel is anticipated to increase and more motorists will be on the road. Unfortunately, with that comes more impaired drivers. The Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, or PennDOT, the Pennsylvania State Police, or PSP, and the Pennsylvania DUI Association are urging motorists to celebrate responsibly ahead of the Labor Day holiday. According to PennDOT data in 2021, there have been 945 crashes resulting in 12 fatalities statewide over the holiday weekend. Of those 106 crashes that resulted in four fatalities, fatalities were alcohol related and 38 crashes that resulted in three fatalities were drug related. Over this holiday period, PSP and local municipal agencies will conduct impaired driving enforcement details as part of a national impaired driving enforcement and education initiative running through September 5. Impaired driving enforcement goes beyond checking for alcohol impairment. Law enforcement will also work on identifying identifying motorists impaired by illegal drugs and prescription medication or some combination of these. Meanwhile, take care this coming Labor Day and remember that safety is everyone's responsibility. Myla Simbulan, Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. The supply of N95 respirators is now more than the demand. Almost three years into the COVID-19 pandemic, there is no longer a shortage in the U.S. of this highly used face protection device. Rasel Feria has the details. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, announces that N95 respirators have been removed from the agency's medical device shortage list. The FDA says the demand or projected demand for this type of face protection device commonly used in healthcare settings no longer exceeds the supply. The health agency attributes the removal to the increase in domestic manufacturing of N95 respirators. The FDA also says updates to the FDA supply chain assessment based on engagement with industry and federal stakeholders have been made. Plus, the CDC's National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health has approved new disposable N95s and reusable respirators. The FDA Center for Devices and Radiological Health's Office of Strategic Partnerships and Technology Innovation says the national capacity for production of high-quality single-use respirator is stronger and that the country's supply chain is more resilient. During the pandemic, respirators were one of the first medical devices identified as being in critical shortage. The FDA is required by law to maintain a device shortage list to provide transparency to the American public, particularly those who use or purchase medical devices. Roselle Feria, Washington, D.C., Eagle News, we live in extraordinary times. Leaders, scholars, and community members will gather this month at the White House to tackle hunger and diet-related illnesses. The goal? End the food struggle by 2030. Arlene Ocampo tells us more. The U.S. announces that the Biden-Harris administration will host the White House Conference on Hunger, Nutrition, and Health on September 28, 2022 in Washington, D.C. President Joe Biden says this will be the first conference of this kind in more than 50 years. The conference will bring government leaders, academics, activists, and Americans from all walks of life together to achieve the goal of ending hunger and reducing diet-related diseases in the U.S. by 2030. The reduction of disparities among the communities who are impacted the most by these issues is also on the table. Millions of Americans suffer food insecurity and diet-related diseases. Here in the U.S., 
Some of the leading causes of death and disability include heart disease, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. And the lack of access to healthy and affordable foods is one of many factors impacting hunger and diet-related diseases. Add to that the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic that makes these challenges harder to overcome. To learn more and join in taking action, visit whitehouse.gov slash Hunger Health Conference. Arlene Ocampo, Washington, D.C., Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. In other news, the City of Toronto in Canada sounds the alarm on a meningococcal disease outbreak. This disease kills 1 in 10 infected people. Joshua Centelliana reports. Toronto Public Health declares an outbreak of meningococcal disease in the city after one of three infected individuals have died. Meningococcal disease is a rare but serious infection that kills about 1 in 10 people. Children under 5 and teens to young adults are the most susceptible. The three reported individuals in Toronto are between 20 to 30 years old. All have the same rare strain of meningococcal disease. However, no link has been found between the cases. The disease spreads easily through kissing or sharing items that have direct contact with infected saliva or mucus. The disease can cause death within a few hours and if an individual survives, one in three can develop permanent disabilities such as loss of limbs and brain damage. The best preventative measure is vaccination. Most people who attended school in Canada during the 2000s will most likely be immunized against the disease. However, since school immunization programs only became a widespread practice in those years, Toronto Public Health is urging all individuals to find out if they are vaccinated against the meningococcal disease. Joshua Santoliana, Toronto, Ontario, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. Now, did you know that too much reading or watching the news may be a source of stress and anxiety? Let's find out more from Julian Fiesta. Keeping up with current events and wanting to know what is happening elsewhere in the world is normal. But those who compulsively check the news and stay glued to cable news channels are more likely to suffer from stress, anxiety, and even physical problems. This conclusion in a new online survey done by Texas Tech University that asked 1,100 adults about their news consumption. People were asked the extent they agreed with statements like, I'm so absorbed in the news, I forget about the world around me or I find it difficult to stop reading or watching the news. Associate Professor Brian McLaughlin says people with higher levels of problematic news consumption were more likely to experience mental and physical illness. McLaughlin says nearly three quarters of study participants who reported severe levels of problematic news consumption reported feeling mentally ill quite often. That compares to just 8% of all other study participants. The study also found 6 out of 10 problematic news consumers said they experienced physical illness quite a bit compared to just 6% of other participants. The symptoms included fatigue, pain, poor concentration, and digestive issues. McLaughlin says the findings show there is a need to educate people to develop a healthier relationship with the news. Tuning out the news isn't the answer either, says the professor, because that will leave a person unaware of what is going on in the world. Julian Fiesta, Los Angeles, California, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. There's several stories from Thomas Likeness today, from a penguin fitted with orthopedic shoes, to pets getting acupuncture treatments, to tons of tomatoes getting thrown all over. Here's Correspondent at Large. And now news and commentary from around the globe. Lots of unusual stuff today. Oh, those aching feet. You ever have that? That's how this penguin at the San Diego Zoo must have felt. He finally got some relief after being fitted with custom orthopedic shoes. Lucas is a four-year-old African penguin. He suffers from a chronic condition known as bumblefoot. Well, what's that? Senior wildlife care specialist at the zoo, Debbie Denton, says that happened when pressure sores began developing on his feet and ankles 
when he walked. Lucas was not walking appropriately. He was showing a lot of tenderness on his left side, which is where his bumble is located. Um, so you would see him listing to the right a bit, um, and you would see him limping on his left foot. Uh, since we've been able to put the shoes on him, he's shown a much more normal gait, um, walking on flat surfaces. There's no limping, there's no favoring um, his left side any longer. Now his special shoes are made of neoprene and rubber. Benton says they make Lucas feel more comfortable and help him fit into the colony just a little bit better. And what else is happening on the animal health care front? In China, people are taking their pets for acupuncture. Veterinarian Li Wen says animal acupuncture has been around for centuries in China. He says traditional Chinese medicine is not intended to replace conventional medicine. The doctor says both have their strengths and complement each other. So how does he take care of a patient? Before starting treatment, Wen first checks the animal's body, examines its eyes and the color of its tongue, as well as getting a bit of its history from the owner. Then he plants the needles at acupuncture points specific for dogs and cats. Most animals, he says, don't fight it, but Wen says out of 10 patients, one or two will be somewhat resistant and he has to calm them down. Soft music plays in the background to help them relax. So what sort of things does he treat with acupuncture? Well, disorders like paralysis, limb weakness, epilepsy, pain, acupuncture for pets. This is a food fight that involves the whole town and even draws tourists. As a matter of fact, it's billed as the world's biggest food fight. It takes place in Spain, in the town of Bunol. Thousands of people splattered each other with tomatoes celebrating the return of Tomatina. The annual event was another victim of the pandemic. It had been canceled for two years, but now it's back. And on the appointed day, as the clock struck noon, fireworks were launched and the free-for-all began. A convoy of six trucks brought in the ammunition, 130 tons, that's right, 130 tons of ripe tomatoes. Revelers, some of them wearing goggles to protect their eyes, pelted each other with the produce. Others lay in the pulp. Here are the thoughts of a couple of tourists who took part in it. So we were enjoying it a lot. There were a lot of tomatoes, a lot of big trucks coming by, a lot of tomatoes on my head as well. <laughs> but a great experience. This is our first time in Tomarina and I'm loving it. I really love the flavor of tomatoes here and the fun and all the vibrant energy over here. I love Europe. This is my, I love the experience. Tomatina started in 1945 when locals brawling in the street at a folk festival grabbed some tomatoes from a grocer's stall and let loose. Well, there'll be no food fight here. I prefer to eat my tomatoes. Back in seven days and in the meantime, I wish you all peace, joy, and happiness in the ensuing week. Thomas Eyelikeness, correspondent at large, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. I think tomato soup will be out of our menu for a while. But in other news, the United States needs teachers. There is an ongoing crisis in the nation and it's all about the lack of teachers in our schools. First Lady Jill Biden is taking steps to address the struggle. Here's Philip Toledo on Learning Curve. As students across the nation return to the classroom, First Lady Jill Biden has vowed to address a critical supply chain shortage in education, teachers. Speaking to the White House Domestic Policy Council meeting to strengthen the teaching profession, Dr. Biden announced new commitments to support school districts in need of teachers, as well as reminded current teachers to take advantage of temporary adjustments to the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program that allow more people to qualify than ever before. 
According to the administration, schools across the country are struggling to fill teacher vacancies, as well as other education-related roles such as nurses, counselors, paraprofessionals, and even bus drivers. To help, companies such as ZipRecruiter are launching online portals specific to K-12 education jobs, and the company Handshake will help college students and graduates learn about the impact of a career in education. Job posting giant Indeed will also host virtual education-focused career fairs throughout the year. Additionally, the Department of Education and Labor issued a joint letter to state lawmakers and elected leaders to increase teacher pay to a livable and competitive wage, as well as to expand preparation and support for teachers through apprenticeship programs. The administration quoted a stat that between 1996 and 2021, weekly teacher wages increased by less than $30, adjusted even for inflation. Various national organizations are also joining hands to help increase and diversify teacher talent pipelines across the country. The meeting ended by reminding current teachers and other public servants to take advantage of temporary adjustments to the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, which again allows more people to qualify for student loan forgiveness than ever before. Those interested do need to apply by October 31st of this year by visiting www.pslf.gov. Philip Toledo, Learning Curve, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. Now, home sales are down in the country, a trend housing experts call moving towards stability. Here's Anna Kui on Mind Your Business. Some experts say the housing market is in a recession, while others argue it's simply in a correction state. Meanwhile, the housing market continues to show signs of slowing down as new home sales in July fell to their lowest level since January 2016, according to the National Association of Home Builders. Now, we continue to see this domino effect starting from the supply chain disruptions and mortgage rate increases, that resulting in higher housing costs and pricing consumers out of the market, especially first-time home buyers. Now, all of these causing an ongoing decline in builder sentiment. According to NAHB, newly built home sales are down 12.6% in July and down 29.6% from a year ago. Home inventory remains elevated at almost an 11-month supply, up 81.7% over last year, with 464,000 available for sale. Now, even though there may be more homes in the market, demand continues to outnumber supply. Nationally, the median sales price rose to 439 $400,000 in July, up 5.9% compared to June, and is up 8.2% compared to a year ago. Now here in Las Vegas, we can see the housing market aligning with the overall slowing down. Industry experts are saying the current market is moving towards stability as property prices fell for the second month in a row in July. Average price sold last month was 465,000, a 3.1% decrease from June, but still a 14.8% increase from 2021, according to Las Vegas Realtors. Signs of cooling down in the number of home sales can also be seen in Las Vegas, where 2,066 single-family homes were sold in July, down 22.6% from June, and reflects a 38.4% decrease year over year. Anna Kui, Las Vegas, Nevada, Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. In Corpus Christi, Texas, youngsters are giving the term small business a new meaning in this year's Kid Entrepreneur Lemonade Day. We have Jane Kathleen Gregorio in Color My World. They say the children are the future, and what better way to celebrate that than on National Lemonade Day here in Corpus Christi, Texas, where vendor booths are being run by kid entrepreneurs. Let's go check it out. Oh, this is a Kids Lemonade Day. It's a national uh, day for children's entrepreneurs and trying to teach them how to create their own businesses. This is Neil. He's seven. And this is Henry. Five. He's five. And they 
with the help of their father, made the root beer, and kegged it up. They filled up a water keg. Twelve, Twelve of these huge um, This is actually the third year that this has been here uh, at Lazy Beach. They decided, and we all decided, it would be a great thing because there's a lot of need for a lot of thinking children. It's me, Chef Gigi, and I'm eight years old. About to be nine. We've got chicken, a special curry sauce, bell peppers, carrots, potatoes, onions, rice. So we have three businesses. One, hair care and body care. Two, cooking, and then three, self-defense. And we got an award for being the one of the youngest entrepreneurs in Corpus Christi. I'm Chef Avery. I'm seven years old and I'm in third grade. What's it like working with your sister? It feels like really cool. It feels really cool doing this. Every time we, they get some of our food, they start um, getting some more because it's so delicious. That's how we make money. I think that you know starting a business and teaching them real world stuff um, was important but I just think you know anything that they can learn that uh, will serve them into adulthood is really important and so I think they're getting that early. I'm in first grade and I am five and a half. And how does it feel to be a first grader that's running her own business? Tell us about that. Well in first grade it's really really hard for me because I'm still five and my business is kind of easy because I'm kind of getting used to it, so it's pretty easy now. And you're really good at math. Yeah, I'm really good at math. Did you have a lot of customers today? Yes. And how did the customers like your lemonade? Well, I should say they probably liked it because I tried strawberry lemonade before and I like it, so, but I think they might like it. All summer she's asked to be a part of a lemonade stand um, and we saw this event coming up and so we just decided to go ahead and do it and this is her first time doing it. <laughs> um, I love to see like everyone's take on doing the lemonade stand. Um, there's so many different varieties of things that are being offered so I think that's really inspiring and cool to see the parents that are backing that and supporting it. Our company name is Frozen Treat. I'm nine years old and I'm in fourth grade. Um, I'm 12 and I'm in 7. We are making lean bangs, so they tend to keep like a popsicle without a stick. How did you come up with this idea and these flavors? Uh, well, they are, um, they are styrofoam from like in Puerto Rico. Uh, that's where my dad and my mom like, used to live. What's the most popular flavor? I think it would be grape, um, cherry, and blueberry. And how has business been so far? It's been pretty good, honestly. Yeah, lots of people are coming because of like, get stuff. So. Um, their, their father. So now we have the opportunity to do this today and we they, they were inspired by that and, and so they, they really wanted to sell something that we I used to eat back home in Puerto Rico. Starting that young, it just makes me so proud of all these kids having the idea and not being afraid to carry on what they see as far as within their own vision at such a young age. It's incredible and it's inspiring as well. I, I, I can't do nothing but applaud them and their efforts and they've also opened the way for other kids, even adults, to follow them. So my children have become kids that even adults want to follow and emulate. Jane Kathleen Gregorio, Eagle News, Corpus Christi, Texas. We live in extraordinary times. Now before we let you go, here's our photo of the week by Karen Figueroa. This is part of a trail in Muir Woods. Muir Woods has been a federally protected national monument since 1908. It is managed by Golden Gate National Recreation Area and is one of over 390 parks in the National Park System of the United States. Thank you all for joining us again. If there are stories or topics you want us to share with you, just comment below. View, like, share our other shows. City Limits with Alan Basalyahe. Connected with Dr. David. Take a seat and join us with Anna Kui. Plate Date with Mike Hudson and friends. Plus, Journey, stories of Filipinos in Canada with 
Kathleen Cruz. Now follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at Eagle News Live. I am EJ Gonzalez. We live in extraordinary times. Happy weekend, everyone.